I will say, by the end, like, yeah, when I first got in here, like, you know, getting in and then, like, doing the control check and, like, it's bumping into the handles a little bit or, like, if the handle's in a little bit, it kind of pushes, you know, catches <laughs> on the hand, like, by the end, I kind of forgot that there was even a rocket under me. Getting the annual done on the existing jet, and now we're going to go test fly the new jet, also fresh out of a shipping container from Estonia, just like this one was last year. Uh, Matt's too chicken to try it, so I think I'm going to go for the first flight. AGT is still good, fuel's good. Everything else looks fine. Smells like a Russian jet. Captain traffic, Albatross jet's gonna do a high speed taxi down the runway 6, Captain. Everything's in the green, we're gonna do a high speed taxi test down the runway. Okay, bleed air valves work at 70s, like upper 70s and upper 80s. Climb check here. Go. That looks good. I'm gonna do high speed taxi. Make sure everything feels good. Controls respond as expected. about 70 knots or so. Okay. I would say the brakes don't seem as responsive as the uh, the other one. Is that anything to look at? I mean, I think it's fine, but should that be turned up or something? And Shane, do you copy? You three nine Lima, you got us? I got you now. Can you, can you couldn't hear me before? Yeah, this radio is terrible, man. It's not you, it's this radio. Okay. So the brakes seem much less effective than 139 Lima. I mean, I got it to 70 knots and had no problem stopping, but it took a lot more space than I expected to stop. Should we adjust that before, or I guess my other question is, should the uh, emergency brakes be just as effective either way? I'm thinking that they need to be worn in a little bit before they're going to be more effective. I know on 139 we adjusted the pressure a little bit on the handle pull. Um, you could try another high-speed taxi with a braking. Okay, you think they'll get they'll be more worn in on that on the next one? Yeah, he swerved their race. He said they might have rusted on the on the boat over because they hadn't been used in a while. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I'll go the other direction so the wind's calm. Is there an easy way to tell if I use the emergency brake a little bit? If that's I guess that should be much more effective. If it's just the handle pressure that needs to be adjusted. He thinks that it's pretty risky because you might blow the tires. I think it's probably the handle pressure. I used the emergency brake there for a second and it seemed much more effective than like, or I mean, it seemed more effective than a full pull with the handle. Got some traffic, double trust has taken on like 2-4. What is the pressure when you're pulling the, the handle on the stick? Handle is just under 40 a side, even. Um, yeah, just yeah, about 40, 40 a side. Alright, well, you want to try one more and then we'll see? Yeah, I guess does that, do you think those gauges are pretty accurate? Is that, I mean, it just, maybe it's just the handle, maybe it's full, is uh, effective enough and they just adjust it so that it, you get more braking sooner? It's, it's not exact science, every airplane's different, so. Um, I think on the last one he made a slight adjustment to the handle brake to get it to be slightly more effective, but once you're in a high-speed taxi and see if it feels better. Yeah, I'm just looking at what it does as I start to move the handle. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, it seems like almost all the braking is just like the last little, probably, you know, 10% of pulling the handle. Alright. Oh, you want to run a test on it or what? Well, I mean, is that, like, adjusting the handle, would that basically change that? Because basically I'm, I'm, like, pulling the handle half when I get 10, and then, you know, a little bit more than that is, like, 20, a tiny bit more is, like, 30, and then a tiniest bit more is, like, 40. She ain't saying he probably ought to, he thinks she ought to give it a thumbs up and go fly it, and then we can make an adjustment. Okay. I'll do one more text.
Okay, I think I still get enough about the brakes. I'll take it for a flight. Got some traffic, I'll trust this to party on way six steps. Hey, EGT is good, pressures are good, temps are good, vibrations good. Okay, rudder's effective, 60 knots. Guys, 80, 90, 100, rotate. Okay. 120 gears coming up. We're gonna see if the flaps blow up at 170. Looks like this one could use a little left rudder too. Everything continues to look good. Smells like a Russian jet. Okay, there's a flaps 165, that's good. EGT is still good, fuel's good. Everything else looks fine. Now we'll pitch for about 200 knots for the climb. Nice little fuse layer right here. Radio check. I got you about three by three. Alright, uh, check, everything good? Yeah, everything's good so far. Okay, so we got that. We just put 150 emergency gear, looking like that. So at 220 we're doing, well, 205. Go off this way just a little bit, we'll be away from any airways. Okay, so 150 knots, and the emergency gear extension here, landing gear. That is. Well, they're all safety wired, but there is the gear. Landing gear doors are still open. Okay, put the normal gear handle down then. The emergency gear forward. Normal traffic, six one Zulu entering. Okay, now that downwind to the gear. Put the gear up. Okay, 150 emergency flaps extend. There's that. At half flaps. That full flaps in the horn. Now. Get that back up. Gonna go flap switch. Zero four. Then then normal retraction. Cool. And even cooler. Okay. Gear one and one with the flaps. That's hard to still report. Flap switch up. Okay. Did that air brake retract? We test that one real quick, and then that is it for this stuff. And then it's things like stall speed and whatnot. Let's see what it does in just level flight here, like this. Trim for that. Okay, off the controls. Seems to be nice and stable. And we just got some stalls. So if I put the speed brake out, speed brake's extended. Brake. Rack. Speed brake's in. That back. Now speed brake's back. Speed brake's in. It was in Cafe. Cherokee, one throw me is up with for us. Uh, make a left downwind for 25. The airport's back there. Alright, 6,500 feet. Go up a little bit higher. Got a little bit of a buffet here, coming up 100 knots. Likes to roll a little to the left. 
right at about 100. So that's what we expect there. Now we will add some power for the moment. Okay, then we will go right at about 100. Here down, collapse full, still 7,500 feet. And we'll see what the fall speed is here. A little more slowly. Okay, and about 90 knots just as expected there too. Uh, we'll go ahead, we got that. It will bring one knot to flaps up, get 120, then we'll have gear up. Gear's coming up. And flaps up. So that pretty much completes all the uh, systems checks. I mean, here we can go. Go from auto to manual on the uh, control system. By the ECS, we'll go one, two, off to go a little bit hotter there. One, two, off. A little bit of back. And uh, here at probably 10,000 feet, we get just under 0.1 uh, on the pressure, and we get about a, uh, I don't know, 6,000 foot cabin altitude, 2,500 meters. 2,500 meters at 11.3. Okay, this is a good entry speed for an aileron roll. And that works. That was a 200 knots. That's the whole envelope for that, for the, uh, well, good entry. What's approved? See if we're at 12.5, we can do a barrel roll. Up a little bit of speed. That's good. The power, everything's good. Pressures are all still good. Have, uh, Okay, there's 14,500 feet. I'll take it to about 350 to see how the handling is there. So far it seems a little more stable than the other one. There's 14,000, floating it over the top. Okay, pick me back up on the pole. Got some traffic, uh, Benangra Mountain 27 Alpha Whiskey turning extended right face, runway 6, Captain. Make a little more noise with the G-suit uh, receiver actually on. That's our other plane does not have it right now. Okay, I think that's good for this flight. We got some traffic, Albatross jets about 11 to the southwest. Gonna be straight in for the overhead. Left brake, runway 6, Gadsden. Are you a full stop? Are you working the pattern? That was over Gadsden. Uh, so I have to uh, that way I can clear the runway quicker. Okay, got some traffic, Albatross jets 9 to the southwest for the uh, overhead left brake, runway 6, full stop, Gadsden. Alright, I'm turning base at this time. Yeah, you'll be no factor. Okay, good green pressure's good. The brakes are out for now. Arrow braking. Goes down. Get on the brakes. Well, it was fun doing the first flight of this airplane since it's been put back together from a shipping container from Estonia. And 
By the end, I kind of forgot that I'm sitting on a live rocket charge, so... Even after the ejection seat training and everything, it's just a little unnerving knowing that, you know, you're like, man, I can pull these handles or something or get them caught on some shit and happen to squeeze and pull, your ass is getting shot out the top at 17 Gs. And if you're outside the ejection envelope, you die. If you're in the ejection envelope, you still might die. Off? Sorry? Emergency brakes off? They are off. Okay. You want it on? No. Okay. Well, it's real nice. Um, I would say it actually flies a lot better than the other one. The other one, I think it's slightly out of the trim when you have to add a little left rudder. The other thing is that at high speed, it seems like it likes to roll left just a little bit. And this one, I was at 350s ran in 60 knots and I didn't see any of that. I will say by the end, like when I first got in here, like, you know, getting in and then like doing the control check and like it's bumping into the handles a little bit or like if the handle's in a little bit, it kind of pushes, you know, catches <laughs> on the hand. Like by the end, I kind of forgot that there was even a rocket under me. Or a checklist behind you? Checklist. Well, it was beside me. Here, you want that back? There's a little clip on the side. Board.